Okay, so good day guys. Uh, this is the recording for chapter 7. Um, it's still long term memory but it's more on the process of how the long term memory uh, encode, um, encodes, retrieve, and consolidates information. So, okay, so let's start with the discussion. Okay, so these are the, um, these are some of the questions that we're going to ponder on while, uh, doing the discussion or while listening to this, um, discussion. So, first off, what is the best way to store information in the long-term memory? Um, what are some of the techniques that we can use to help us get information out of the long-term memory when we need it? and uh, third one how is it possible that a lifetime of experiences and accumulated knowledge can be stored in in the neurons and lastly how can how can the results of memory research be used to create a more effective uh, study technique so hopefully after this discussion um some of the things that will be uh, mentioned here uh you will try and incorporate it in your study habits as well as uh, your different strategies for studying no so para mas ano mas maganda yung results ng exam nyo and uh, mas uh, nare-retain yung mga information na kakailangan niyo later on um, in higher psychology subjects all right so when we talk about um long-term memory or getting the information to long-term memory so we have of course the the concept of encoding so remember um previously we have the concept of coding now coding again this is the information that is presented to us so basically yun yung i-encode natin whereas pagdating na ni encoding Ito na yung um, the, the information that was presented to you, you are going to acquire it and transform it later on into a memory, particularly in the long-term memory. Now, um, syempre magkaiba yung uh, uh, presentation or being presented of the data and uh, encoding the data kasi... Um, Remember, well, the coding, uh, pinapresent lang sa'yo, basically. So, nakikita mo siya, di ba, uh, using your sensory uh, memory or working memory, so, pinaprocess mo siya. However, um, you're not encoding it per se. So, this is why, um, hindi siya na-store sa long-term memory mo. So, that's pretty much how it is. Okay, so, Next, uh, retrieval. So, when we talk about retrieval, this is more on the um, process of getting the information from the long-term memory to the working memory. So, kumbaga, from the storage, uh, alisin mo siya sa storage para um, ma, kumbaga, ma, ma process or you can work out with that or work work on with that particular information that you retrieve from the long-term memory. So, like for example, um, tatanungin sa'yo, kailan niya ba ang birthday ni uh, tatay or ng, ng tatay mo, ng um, grandfather mo or kung sino man, ba? So, this is something that we store in the long-term memory kasi nga, if going back to the previous uh, discussion, it's part of our episodic as well as our semantic memory uh, particularly or uh, more specifically it's part of our autobiographical memory because it's something that is factual as well as personal to us now um when we answer forms we have to retrieve this information otherwise you will not be able to answer these forms lalo na yung mga government forms right we usually do that uh, when we when we answer these types of form nagkakaroon ng retrieval process uh, wherein uh, from the long-term memory we're um, tra 
transferring it back to the uh, working memory so that we can do something or uh, yeah complete a task that has something to do with that particular information and then we also have these two types of rehearsals um, now the first one the maintenance rehearsal this is just the repetition of the stimuli so um, with that particular repetition uh, parang, uh, I see a lot of students doing this type of study maintenance rehearsal so, uh, what are the branches of psychology so, lang nila sasabihin. so basically nire-repeat lang nila yung mga branches ng psychology na alam nila so like for example sabi niya um, cognitive psychology abnormal psychology uh, we also have uh, developmental psychology we also have um, learning psychology this psychology blah 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 psychology so that's just repetition so that is maintenance rehearsal however the uh, the second one the other type of rehearsal which is the elaborative rehearsal this one uses meanings and connection and this helps to transfer the information better to the long-term memory so this is when we do the study or when we memorize the information in a sense na okay abnormal psychology um uh, sabi niya, uh, different branches of uh, psychology or different fields or discipline of psychology so we have abnormal psychology which focuses on uh, the different uh, mental disorders uh, uh, that um, uh, affects people from different ages then we also have developmental psychology which is the study about the developmental stages across um, age uh, age, um, yeah, across age group or across, um, uh, what do you call this one? Ah, across lifespan. So that is the correct term. Um, we're in, uh, the changes in, uh, various areas like, um, cognitive development, emotional development, physical development. Uh, psychological development uh, are uh, tackled in this particular branch so that is more elaborative rehearsal wherein you're not just um, you're not just rehearsing the different fields of psychology but you're also giving them meaning uh, no si abnormal psychology or ano yun ni study kay abnormal psychology ano yun ni study kay cognitive psychology ano yun ni study sa developmental psychology so on and so forth and by doing so um, you're able to make the <coughs> the concept more meaningful and you're able to retain it uh, better in the uh, long term memory or you're able to um, encode it better in your long-term memory okay so okay now um, in terms of our memory or getting the information to our long-term memory so we have uh, what we call the levels of learning a uh, processing theory levels of processing theory now um, in this particular theory ang sabi niya is memory depends on how information is encoded so um, so depending kung paano natin siya uh, in encode or paano nga natin siya inintindi or paano natin siya pre-nasses um, doon mapupunta yung information na yun. so uh, and this is what we call the depth of processing so we have two types of processing the first one is um, the shallow processing wherein we have or we we pay little attention to the meaning of the the information or the um, yeah, the information or the data that we have to encode 
and then we also focus only on the physical features of this thing uh, and that this results to poor memory so uh, again this is how um, or this is what I see with a lot of students when they study, so they would just, uh, di ba, kahit sabihin mong may, may, may physical book kayo, sometimes I would just see them, ano, yung mindlessly highlighting words on the book, but they don't really process it per se. So, it's more on the shallow processing, kasi they just highlight it, but then when you ask them, Anong sinabi dito sa chapter na to? They cannot recall a lot of what's said in that chapter because they only focus on the physical features. And most of the time, nakikita ko yung mga sujante pag tinignan ko yung libro nila or pag nasilip ko yung libro nila. They only highlight the, the concept that is uh, already italicized or naka bold na yung ano yung font so they focus on that uh, the physical feature of the text per se na ay importante to kasi naka italicized or naka bold siya so i have to highlight it so it's the physical feature of the uh, the text it's not really something that they uh, put into oh they don't really pay much attention to what is written there. They just see most of the time na, ah, naka-italicize siya. Or iba yung font niya. So, uh, this must be important. Diba? So, um, think about it and try to see if ganun nga yung ginagawa nyo when you have um, study materials. How do you study these uh, materials? And then we also have this uh, deep processing we're in uh we pay close attention to uh, the meaning of the words and um with deep processing it is better encoded in our memory than the shallow processing so how do you pay close attention to the meaning so you know you have or as we go further along this discussion mas maintindihan natin kung paano tayo makakapag-pay ng close attention dun sa meaning nung, um, nung concept. Alright. So, next. Okay. So, aside from this one, what they also found out in other studies about the um about encoding the data in the long term memory is that a visual imagery helps a lot so this is why uh, a lot of students are uh, visual learners mas na mas naintindihan nila yung materials when they see an image uh, or they connect an image to what they are trying to learn they are not just hearing it and they are not just um, reading it. So this is why your books and this is why a PowerPoint presentation or recorded PowerPoint pres presentation such as this also have um, figures, graphs, and um, tables uh, as to help enhance the learning. So, ayan, katulad nito, may table tayo dito para ma-enhance niya yung learning niyo. So, with the visual imagery um in the in the study by uh, bauer and win winsens diba <laughs> ang hirap sabihin so what they have seen is that um the second group remembered more than twice as many words because they are the imagery group so they were given um uh, words to remember and it is uh, presented in um visual or using uh pictures instead of just reading words diba so uh 
from this particular study or experiment, they were able to prove na nakakatulong ang visual imagery sa encoding ng uh, materials to our long-term memory. And then, aside from this, they were, uh, we also see the self-reference effect. Now, the self-reference effect, uh, this is another study that was done wherein um, ang nakita nila is that our memory is better when we link the word um, to us uh, better. So, like for example, uh, I remember I remember when I was um, in elementary uh when I was learning history, uh, uh, and daming ano, and daming mga tao ayaw sa history, no? Because of the fact that you have to remember dates, you have to remember people, you have to remember uh, what happened, you have to remember also the location, di ba? So, daming mong tatandaan. But, um, when I was in grade 6, I enjoyed um, history a lot because of the fact that Firstly, uh, there are certain dates na may link sa akin. So, like, for example, uh, Bataan Day. Bataan Day is, um, Bataan Day is quite memorable for me. I really remember that because of the fact it's on my birthday. So, of course, the year is different, but it's on my birthday. And then, I also remember that because um, my grandfather also walked the that that ano that that march uh, that was uh, that's being celebrated during the Bataan Day or Araw ng Kagitingan, which is held on that particular day. So that is self-reference effect. So I was able to uh, memorize it well or memorize the events that was taught to us. Um, what happened during that time what happened in uh, world war ii uh, uh here in the philippines etc etc because of that particular uh self-reference effect um because birthday ko siya, so i was able to uh, connect it or it, it made more meaning for me and then um the same one i was trying to learn uh, uh i think this was in fourth grade history uh, not history per se, but more on uh, Philippine geography. So, kasama siya ng history nun eh, nung um, nasa elementary ko. So, I remember when I was um, learning uh, yung mga regions. So, na-assign ako sa region 9. And the number 9, of course, is quite um, personal for me. Kasi nga, yun nga yung birth date, birth date ko. So, talagang uh, inintindi ko siya. Uh, kahit na medyo tanga ako sa direction, to be honest. But, uh, I didn't have a problem uh, memorizing the uh, the provinces in Region 9. Because, uh, again, self-reference effect. So, uh, think of the, the things that you learned or you have uh, stored in your long-term memory because of this type of effect. Okay, and then we also have the generation effect. Now, the generation effect naman, this pertains to um, generating the material ra uh, rather than passively receiving it. And um, what they have seen is that when you generate it by yourself or when you generate uh, things uh, better, <clears throat> like for example, kung ano sasabihin ko, um, cognitive psychology. So, habang, uh, like for, yeah, cognitive psychology, so habang pinapaliwanag ko siya, um, you're also generating uh, how you understood how you understand um, my definition or the definition that I'm giving you about what cognitive psychology is. So, that's generation effect. Rather than just uh, listening to what I'm talking about or what I'm uh, discussing about cognitive psychology, you're also trying to um, make your own um, 
you're generating your own uh, idea of what um, what cognitive psychology is. Kumbaga, nag-notes ka rin na parang to put it simply, oh, di ba, kawari, isang paragraph yung sinabi ni Ma'am Karen about um, generation effect. Pero ikaw, habang ninonotes mo, nilagay mo, to put it simply, um, uh, you are developing or generating another way to uh, define it without really missing the whole context of the uh, concept. So, that is the generation effect. So, and this type of effect was also uh, seen in an experiment done by uh, Slameka and uh, Peter Graff. Uh, wherein uh, they have uh, two groups, uh, the read group and the generate group. Now, to on the read group, pinagbasa lang nila ng um, pairs of related words, whereas with the generate group, they had the, the group fill in the blanks with the word related to the first word. So, ang nakita nila is that uh, the generate group was able to produce 28% uh, more words uh, in pairs than the read group. So, kasi nga, you are the one who is um, making or developing a word that you're going to associate with the cue or the, the concept that you have to uh, retrieve. Okay. And then, we also have organization or organizing information uh, or organizing to be remembered uh, information. Now, in this particular um, factor or way to study the material, this is where in when we group similar uh, items together. So, when we try to recall them or we uh we i'm not sure with you guys but when i go to the grocery kasi ganun na ko mag mag ano mag uh less um because of the fact kaya minsan pupunta ka ng grocery store uh or ng grocery wala akong shopping list so ang ginagawa ko doon is um i group things together uh, based on how they are uh, in the grocery store. Kung asan sila nakalagay. So, like for example, um, di ba magkatabi ang uh, coffee, tea, at saka yung mga chocolate drinks as, lo as well as yung, ano, yung honey, and sometimes even the sugar are there. So, pag sinusulat ko sila sa grocery list, magkakatabi sila or magkakasunod sila. Um, and sometimes we just spontaneously organize them like that um, so that it will be easier for us to recall later on. Okay. And then also, um, With this one, we also have uh, relating words to the survival value. So, like for example, um, uh, so ang nangyayari kasi dito is when we when we relate uh, the words to survival value, like for example, uh, increase. So, we access uh, the count number of the words and date the item's survi survival value. So, um, sometimes we tend to remember words that are more, uh, that are shorter. Diba? Like, for example, doon sa uh, isang concept na natutunan natin in the previous, um, in the previous chapter. Diba? Pag mas ma-exe yung name, mas mataas ang chances na mas ma-remember natin siya kesa sa mga words or 
uh, names na mahahaba. So, um, kasi nga, since it's too much or the, the, the task is elaborative masyado or high load yung task niya, remembering all those uh, vowels and consonants, um, we tend to stick to the simpler names or the simpler words. So, this is also why uh, when we write essays, di ba, um, none of us are really uh, shooting yung mga highfalutin words because um, we don't really remember all of this uh, dictionary words or mga vocabulary, deep, deep, deep vocabulary words uh, because we cannot really retrieve them easily because they have died out due to the survival value dahil nga mahaba siya uh, dahil hindi siya masyadong common na word, uh, hindi mo siya masyadong ginagamit. Ayan. Kaya hindi mo na siya ma... Uh, hindi mo siya maalala or hindi siya mabilis ma-retrieve. Pero aware ka dun sa mga words na yun. And then we also have the retrieval uh, practice. Now, with the retrieval practice, um, when we, this, a good example for this is when we study for tests and then um, when then uh, when we are given makeup exams and answer practice tests actually helps in better memory than rereading the information. So, this is a good, this is a good um, technique actually. So, <clears throat> a lot of students of mine, I would see them, lalo na pag, ano, pag finals na, kasi ang finals usually ay cover to cover. Ganun po ang finals natin, no? So, <laughs> I'm sorry to say, or I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but this is how, or that's how the, the, <clears throat> the finals usually happen. So, we study uh, all of the materials, um, However, what I see with my students is that uh, what they do is they just reread the chapters that they've been through, the chapters that they got through from the first, um, from the first, ano ba to? Yeah, from the first chapter up to the last. And um, hindi siya masyadong uh, effective given the fact that uh, there might be information overload the sobrang madaming materials kang aaralin, di ba? So, kaya medyo mahirap yung ganong type ng pag-study. And that's not also advisable. Kasi, uh, more or less, pinapagod mo yung neurons mo and you're also, um, na, uh, you're, what you're also doing is counterproductive than productive. So, uh, what is seen from the uh, experiments or studies is that when you do um, practice tests instead of rereading the materials or the information, um, they found out na mas mataas yung score mo or mas tumataas yung score when, when you do, do practice items or when you review yung mga uh, items na kung saan nagkamali ka ng sagot mas mataas ang chances na tataas or ma-re-remember mo yung mga concepts na na-miss mo doon sa previous test mo. And this is also why I gave back uh, the previous um, the previous quizzes that we had. I gave you ay, hindi ko pa yata na bibigay lahat, no? Um, sabihin nyo na lang sa synchronous class kung ano pa yung kulang ko sa inyo but I, I know that I gave copies of the quizzes already, I'm not just sure kung kanino ko na naibigay okay okay, so may problema tayo doon <laughs> uh, nilagay ko lang siya sa working memory ko, kaya um, uh, uh, hindi ko maalala kung sinong pinagbigan ko okay Okay, <clears throat> now what we're seeing is the, the self-reference effect. So, these are some of the, the things that, or the questions that they did uh, when uh, giving the results for the self-reference effect. 
na study. So, what they uh, found out is that if it's just physical characteristics of the word, ayan, happy, um, hindi nila masyadong naalala. And then, if it's uh, what word rhymes with happy, ayan, snappy, um, it's not also that high yung recall and then uh, means the same as happy like for example upbeat uh, also not um, high in terms of recall and then however when it, it's a self-reference word happy ayan tingnan natin yung results ayan so kung makikita natin dito ito yung results nung uh, experiment na yun so sa size um, hindi nila or konti lang, mababa yung proportion ng uh, nag um, nag recall ng word as compared doon sa dinescribe yung sarili nila using the word or ni recall yung uh, word na yon in uh, in reference to themselves so mas mataas yung proportion na yon so, this is also why the self-reference effect is quite um, effective when you study. Okay. And then, this is uh, the results or just um, an overview of what happened doon sa generating information na study. So, yan katulad na to. Paano nakakuha na mataas na score yung uh, generate group? They fill in the blank with uh, this one. Words that would relate to the first word. So, like for example, yan, king. So, anong isasagot natin dito? Possibly crown, right? Wala namang ibang CR na pwedeng uh, related sa king instead of crown, no? I, I, and then we also have a horse here. So, anong possible na marerelate natin sa horse or uh, saddle right and then lamp ano kaya tong sh na to so ayan pag-isipan niyo pwedeng shade diba lamp shade so compound words so these are some of the examples for the generate group whereas ito yeah, binigay talaga sa kanila yung pair. So, this is why the passive reading na study technique is not really that effective. Unless na may photographic memory ka, then good for you. Um, passive reading would be good, uh, I think would be an okay technique for you. But, um, for those na hindi pinagpala ng photographic memory such as myself, we have to learn the information on, in another way in order to put it in our long-term memory. <clears throat> okay. And then with this one, with the organization, uh, organizing information demo, um, yan. so if, 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 if it's me, ang gagawin ko dito, yan, lahat ng uh, fruits, yan, yan, ano ko, I, isusunod uh, pag gugrupo grupuhin ko para mas ma, uh, mas easier sa akin lumipat-lipat kung asaan yung mga or kung ano yung mga bagay na kailangan kong i-recall uh, there are, are some others naman ang gagawin naman nila for organizing is to uh, put the words in alphabetical order so there are like uh, those so um so, with that one, uh, syempre may, uh, may factor pa rin dito ng uh, personality mo. Paano ka mag-organize. So, but the, the point here is that when we organize information better, the higher the chances that the information will be stored in our long-term memory. Okay, so this is another way for us to uh, organize information so katulad nga nung example ko kanina if you would put it uh, here uh, fields of psychology 
then under the fields of psychology, uh, siguro sabihin natin, meron tayong uh, behavioral and meron tayong um, cognitive. So, ano yung mga uh, branches or uh, fields na nasa cognitive, ano yung mga branches or fields na nasa behavioral, so on and so forth. Okay. And then, we also have this one, organization, comprehension, and study, where, uh, memory, sorry, where in, uh, in this particular uh, experiment, diba? if we just read it, ang tanong ko sa inyo, naintindihan nyo ba yung binasa nyo? I'll give you a moment, or I'll give you, siguro 30 seconds to read it all. So, 30 seconds. Sabi ko ba minutes? Oh, 30 seconds. Okay, so, um, what did you understand in that particular, in this particular um, paragraph? If it's confusing and nonsense for you, then you're not alone in that. Um, in this study by Bransford and Johnson, uh, wh what they did is they have one group to read this first and then show the the first group this picture and then another group the group to to see the picture and then read this second okay okay so tandaan nyo kung paano nila yung ginawa ah. and what they found out is that um <coughs> Uh, the picture helps to provide a mental framework that links the sentence uh, together to create a meaningful story. So, uh, mas naintindihan siya ni group 2 kesa kay group 1. Kasi nga, nauna nilang nakita yung picture kesa binasa yung uh, paragraph. So, um, by by organizing the information in that manner, mas naintindihan agad nila yun. So, this is also why there are some of my discussions, um, not in your case, no, uh, kasi hindi, kumbaga, uh, everything are read naman well on the book, on the textbook, but in the case of my abnormal psychology classes, there are certain chapters or certain lessons that I have to, uh, I have to use uh, a digital whiteboard in order to show them the diagram of how the the symptoms are connected to each other. Kasi pag hindi ko siya ginawa, the disorders that we will be talking about will be just like this for my abnormal psychology student. Whereas, if I explain it to them using a picture, they would be able to organize it be better, therefore increasing their, uh, increasing their comprehension and, of course, increasing the chances that it would be put in their long-term memory. Ayan. So, ito yung results na nagawa nila. Uh, we also have a control group pala in this particular uh, study. I forgot to mention the control group. Uh, but the control group, what they, they didn't really see the picture. So, so in terms of performance, ayan, yung grupo na pinakitaan ang picture before reading the passage or the paragraph, they were able to um, understand the story, what it what it was trying to say, and commit it to memory. Unlike the other two groups, the experimental group two, na um, binasa muna nila yung passage bago makita yung picture, and yung control group na walang picture na nakita. Okay. 
And I will also have another um, study that was done. So, ito ngayon kanina ang in-explain ko. Uh, from the study of Karpik and Rodiger, uh, what they did is they have three groups na lahat, nag, lahat naman nag-study and they were all tested in all sessions. And then, group 2, ang ginawa lang niya ay studied only the words missed in previous tests and tested on all words. And then, group 3, studied all words, tested only words missed in previous tests. So, ang nakita nila is that the group 3's performance is less than group 1 and group 2. So, tingnan natin dito. Yan. So, in the first uh, study and test session, so, ayan, lahat yon in study nila. So, first uh, study and test session na test. So, yon yun yung tinest nila, lahat ng pairs na pinag-aralan nila. And then, the sa repeat study and test session study, ang ginawa niya dito ay si group 1, yung lahat ng pinag-aralan niya, inulit niya ulit. And then, Si group 2 naman, less ang studying niya, ang pinag-aralan niya lang yung mga pairs na hindi niya na-recall in the previous uh, test. So, basically, yung mga mali niya, yun na yung ni-recall niya. And then, group 3, less testing naman siya. Uh, so, ang ginawa niya dito sa session na to, uh, inaral niya ulit lahat ng pairs. Whereas, pagdating naman sa test session, yung repeat test, so, lahat ng pairs, uh, uh, tinest ulit sila doon. And si group 3, ang ginawa sa kanila is, um, only pairs that are not recalled in the previous uh, test were the ones that were given to them. So, ang result after one week of um, testing dito, so study and test, is that group 1 and group 2 have... Um, 81% correct whereas with group 3 they only have 36% correct um, answer in relation doon sa in-study nila. Okay? So, kaya nga, yun yung kaninang sinasabi ko na um, when we do repeat a study session it's, it's not really helpful that we we try and focus on all of the things that we have studied before Kasi nga, sobrang dami niya, hindi siya, uh, min, hindi na siya productive, nagiging counterproductive na siya. <clears throat> okay. And then we also have this one. Ito yung mga words na um, uh, itines sa kanila using the survival value. And uh, again, kung makikita natin, um, mas mag-stick sa'yo yung mga words na uh, less ang syllables, less ang letters. And, and compared, unlike the words or compared to the words that are uh, more on, <coughs> more on, uh, has a lot of um, syllables and letters aside from that uh, another thing with survival value means and then yung kanilang um, feature so like for example ito kulay blue and this one is black and mas uh, maliit yung font size so this is also why your textbooks also have um or uses different font font style font size diba so naka italicize yung iba naka bold yung iba, naka-underline yung iba, or iba yung uh, font style niya, or size, it's because of this concept, the survival value. Para, mas tumas ang chances na ma-encode siya sa long-term memory nyo. <clears throat> okay. Now, in terms of the retrieval uh, process, yan, when we're trying to retrieve information, from long-term memory so when we talk about retrieval this is when we transfer information from from the long-term memory back to the working memory or our consciousness so again uh just like what i mentioned earlier ito nga yung um 
i-recall mo kailan ba birthday ng tatay mo. So, that is uh, retrieval. Kasi nga, hindi mo naman siya laging sinasabi, ang birthday ng tatay ko ay uh, this month, this day, and this year. Wala kang ganong sinasabi lagi. So, um, usually, nasa part siya ng uh, long-term memory natin, uh, so, nasa unconscious natin siya, and we only pull it back to our consciousness or to our working memory when we need it. So, um, pag nakalimutan natin, so, uh, there is a failure of retrieval. So, most of our failures of memory are failures to retrieve. So, yun talaga yung nangyayari. Ito yun yung sinasabi mo parang, ha, nakalimutan ko na kailan nga ba yung, yung, ano, yung date ng ano mo, or kailan ka nga, anong year ka nga ba pinanga, pinanganak. So, this is a failure to retrieve. Diba? So, this is a more scientific term or a more uh, <clears throat> psychological way of putting it when we forget things. Diba? So, sabi mo, ah, there is a failure of retrieval at the moment. Okay. So, when we when we uh, retrieve information, we have this uh, thing like uh, cued recall. Okay. Now, with cued recall, um, ito yung mga cues uh, that are presented to us in order to remember things or parang, parang clue para maalala natin ano, yung, ano ba yung dapat natin alalahanin. Um, and then, um, the, with the help of re, uh, cued recall, it it increases our performance over free recall. Pag free recall kasi wala siyang, kumbaga, wala kang clue to remember ano yon, Okay? <clears throat> and then, what they also found out is that retrieval cues are most effective when it is created by the person who uses them. So, um, again, it has something to do with uh, making it more personal or making it more uh, subjective for you like for example yung kaninang sinabi ko nga sa inyo na I remember uh, a lot of things about World War II na pinag-aralan namin dahil unang una uh, isa sa mga significant events of World War II um, here in the Philippines happened during uh, my birthday per se, not birth date or birth year but during my birthday so, it's a retrieval cue. Kaya nga pag uh, tinatanong ako, kailan nga ulit ang birthday mo? Habing ko, ah, oh, holiday yon sa April. Kahit anong gawin mo, hindi yon pwedeng hindi holiday. So, yun yung lagi kong sinasabi. Holiday yon sa Pilipinas. So, I'm giving them retrieval cues in order to, uh, in order for them to remember um, that particular date. So, in this particular experiment, we can see uh, mantil, mantilas. Mantilas experiment is, um, ayan. So, this, uh, the x-axis is the percentage of words that they have remembered. And then, the y-axis uh, pertains to um, <coughs> the factors that help them to remember the information. So, makikita natin yung orange uh, graph. So, they were able to remember the nouns using self-generated retrieval cues. And then, yung green part, na parang nasa 55% yung na-remember niya na nouns, um, they remember the, the nouns using other person-generated retrieval cues. So, ibang tao ang nagbigay no retrieval cues nila. So, this is also what we see. Um, ano bang daro? Ah, like for example, Pinoy Henyo. Pinoy Henyo is a good example for this one. So, minsan, uh, di ba, ano siya, uh, you're going to, you're going to guess the word. Uh, based on how it is described 
by the person. So basically, the the person, the other person is giving you um reti retrieval cues, de ba? So syempre, dahil retrieval cues niya yon, yan ang tendency ma medyo mababa siya or almost 40 percent, 30 to 40 percent. Uh, less yung chance na mauhulaan mo yung sinasabi niya kesa pag ikaw yung um, nagbigay ng retrieval cues na yun. Pero you cannot do that in Pinoy Henyo since uh, you're the one who's guessing. no Pero to give you an idea about it, ayan. And then, uh, the 17%, what they, uh, what happened with them is that they never saw the nouns and they were presented with the other person uh, generated retrieval cues. So basically, uh, Pinoy Henyo without really seeing ano yung, ano, ano yung words. So, <laughs> uh, parang ano, blind leading the blind. Diba? Binigyan ka, uh, may words ka na dapat nahulaan tapos yung magbibigay sa iyo ng retrieval cue yun lang ang nakakita nung ano mo ng <coughs> ng uh the words na dapat mong hulaan so that's how pinoy henyo is okay and then we also have or moving to um ano ba to encoding specificity okay with this particular with this particular um wait down with this particular uh, concept so this is another way for us to encode data in our Le uh, long term memory and um, this is when we learn uh, the information together with the context <clears throat> and a good example of this one would be uh, Badili's diving experiment now in this particular experiment so tingnan natin yung ano niya yan <clears throat> so ang ginawa nila is that they have um they, they have a group study words uh, and one group is on land and the other group is under water. So, after that, they divided the groups half on land, half on water. Tapos, yun yung nasa land and then half, half yun naman nasa water. So, ang nakita nila in this study is that uh, the best recall occurred pag yung encoding and retrieval uh, happened in the same location. So, like for example, ito. Yan. Uh, if the words are related to underwater, yan. So, underwater, pinag, uh, in the study nila underwater, uh, pinagtest nila underwater, so mas mataas yung test results. Unlike pag uh, ang, ang, ang words ay un underwater, pero pinagtest on land, mababa yung results. And same for when they were asked to study it on land, when they were tested, mababa nung they were, uh, when they tested underwater. And then, uh, when it was on land, mas tumaas yung results niya. <clears throat> okay. So, same in this particular environment. So, ito naman is uh, when it was noisy and then when it was quiet. So, so pinag-study nila in a noisy environment and then pinag-test din nila in a noisy environment. So, mataas yung results. Um, unlike when the, they were tested in a quiet environment. And then, uh, same here, when they were tested in a quiet, uh, studied in a quiet environment and then tested in a um, quiet environment, so mas mataas ang results kesa noong they were tested in a noisy environment. 
and then also with here when the person was uh, sad studying when sad then they were tested when sad as compared to when they were tested when they're happy so uh, magkaiba yung results diba and then when they were studying when they were happy and study um tested when they were sad and then um tested when they were happy ayan so ang makikita natin dito is that um situation in which the study and test conditions match mas mataas yung performance as compared doon sa uh, mismatch yung study and testing conditions so which is also true so this is why um uh, again diba tinatry nga namin pag pag departmental exam diba yung midterms nyo we try to uh, simulate an environment that is close to a uh, board exam <clears throat> para pag nag uh, pag kukuha na kayo ng board exam mas mataas yung recall nyo kasi yung uh, time na in-study nyo yung mga concept and yung time na magtetest kayo it's pretty much the same environment so this is also what some of our um, students have uh, commented on when they took the board exam kasi uh, although we try to match the the setup ideally as possible minsan kasi yung testing environment kabaligtaran uh, one of um one of our students have complained that they they were assigned in a testing area na may construction so <laughs> So, you can just imagine, di ba? Uh, sa UMAC, we are able to shut out the noise from the outside kahit pa paano, And really focus on the test when it's uh, uh, the midterm exam or finals. However, uh, <laughs> nung board exam na nila, ang ingay-ingay. Sabi na, mom, hindi ko makapag-concentrate, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, definitely, it's, it's a factor that affected the recall of the concepts that they were supposed to uh, answer or recall during the board exam. Okay. Now, from this study, we also see how um, state-dependent learning is happening or can take place, diba? Um, kasi nga nakita natin na um, in one particular condition, uh, pinag-study nila yung nasad yung mood ng mga participants and then they tested them when they were sad and then they tested them again when they were happy and what they found out is mas mataas yung results ng uh, participants when um, they were they studied in a sad state and tested in a sad state as well so this is connected with that particular result so ang nakikita dito is that better memory is seen if the person's mood at encoding matches mood during the retrieval so so this is also why diba pag um ah eto eto yung magandang ano eto yung magandang explanation uh, para sa may mga jowa diyan especially yung mga mga lalaki uh, bakit uh, eto yung mga nakikita natin although ginagawa siyang meme sa Facebook but this can also uh, be a good um, explanation as to why it's happening di ba sabi ang uh, sabi ng mga lalaki bakit yung mga nagawa namin na ang tagal-tagal na naaalala mo pa rin kasi nga the encoding of what happened during that time was done when the woman is angry. So, nung nag-away ulit kayo, ni-retrieve niya ulit. So, this is why, ayan, sinabi niya na naman, naalala mo nung ano, ganto, 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 ganto. Kasi nga, again, from the studies, oh, so, ano na siya, um, uh, proven by studies, Memory is better if the mood of the encoding matches the mood during retrieval. So, <laughs> dahil nga nangyari yun, nagalit siya nung nangyari yun, 
Tapos may ginawa ka ulit, nagalit na naman siya. So, inalala niya na naman yung mga, yung pagkakamali na yun. So, yan. So, that's a good explanation for this. So, um, but in terms of learning, this is also why you have to, we have to uh, make sure that we learn things at our optimum condition. Kasi nga, um, this particular concept had been telling us na uh, pag, pag ayos yung mood mo nun, mas mataas yung chances na retrieval or mas, um, yeah, mas marerecall mo yung mga uh, concepts pag um, nasa, nasa good state ka or good condition ka when you encoded it and when you also try to retrieve it. Kaya nga, uh, when, uh, in relation with this one, ayan, hindi ako nag-study ng, um, yung sobrang galit na galit. I don't do that. I don't also study when I'm very sad. Kasi nga, medyo mahirap siyang i-retrieve when I'm already doing the testing. Kasi, pag nagtetest din ako, ayun, medyo sin- Sinasabi ko talaga, ina-announce ko sa bahay. So, that the people at home will not really stress me out. Para pagdating ko sa, sa testing uh, day, um, kumbaga, nagmamatch yung uh, state ko, nung pinag-aralan ko yung mga materials na yon At saka, yung, um, yung mood ko pag, ano na, test ko na, pag board exam na, or yun, civil, uh, by the way, I also took the civil service exam tsaka yung mga entrance sa exam ko, comprehensive exam I make sure that I'm at my optimum best kasi nga, uh, of this particular uh, concept okay mm. Okay, now in matching cognitive uh, tasks, so this is a uh, transfer appropriate processing wherein a memory task results improve if the type of processing used during cogni- uh, encoding is the same as the type during the retrieval. So, <clears throat> for example, in this case, ang ginawa niya dito ay um, nung encode niya, uh, the person did rhyming task and when it was uh, needed for retrieval, ang ginawa niya ay rhyming test. Okay. So, mas mataas ang chances na yun. Transfer appropriate processing ang tawag natin doon. Whereas, uh, if we compare it with this one, na hindi magka um, <coughs> magkaparehas yung task or yung transfer appro- uh, by hindi appropriate yung transfer per se. Uh, yan. Ang encoding niya ay meaning test, pero ang retrieval niya ay rhyming test. So, it's quite difficult to do that. Uh, but, but only at a slight percentage, hindi naman ganun ka, uh, ka taas yung gap. Pero, um, if, we, if you would look with it, syempre, yung um, kahit 5% lang yan. When we're talking about tests, especially um, board exam tests or board exams, malaking bagay yung 5% increase na yun. Okay. So, this is also why when I teach my class, I don't ask them to um, I don't ask them to memorize the concept only. So, para kasi yun sa kanila, ang, ang kumbaga kung gagawin natin siyang concept, it's for me, it's a comprehension task. And then, in terms of the retrieval, application of the comprehended concept. So, para nagmamatch siya. So, this is why, ang, ang lagi ko ang sinasabi sa mga sijante ko, especially my former students, it's either you know it or you don't. So, that's why I always give, um, I always give uh, identification types of tests 
um, very rare ako magbigay ng quiz na um, multiple choice because um, <clears throat> usually kasi pagdating doon sa retrieval hindi nagmamatch sa kung paano siya in-encode kaya siya mababa so this is uh, this can help explain why I give this types of test so hopefully naiintindihan nyo na yung aking uh, strategy <clears throat> Okay. Now, in terms of consolidating this um, information, let's try to understand it uh, in terms of the neurological perspective. So, paano nga ba nangyayari yung, kasi kanina pinag-usapan lang natin, or the theory per se, uh, anong nangyayari when we encode and when we retrieve information. So, ngayon, pag-usapan na natin anong, uh, what, what happens with the consolidation process. And, um, paano na ko consolidate itong mga information na to. So, we have to look at it in a more neurological manner. So, dahil nga neurological, we're looking at the synapse. Uh, the brain, part of the brain, of course. So, when we talk about consolidation, kasi, this is higher na in the sense that uh, the new memories are transformed from the fragile state. Fragile state meaning, um, pwedeng nasa working memory pa lang sila or nasa short-term memory. Um, but then, when we consolidate it, we try to make them more into a, uh, a permanent state. And then we have two types of consolidation. So the first one is the synaptic consolidation. And then the second one is the systems consolidation. <clears throat> okay. Now, this uh, shows us the two types of consolidation. So this gives us a visual uh, presentation of uh, how it happens. So the synaptic yan it it occurs faster kasi naintindihan na naman natin from the previous uh, chapters how does the synapse work how does the neurons um communicate with each other and we know that it happens in a fraction of a second so the synaptic um consolidations happen fast and uh it involves a lot of changes in the synapse so nagkakaroon ng changes dito However, when we talk about the, the um, system consolidation, which happens at a slower pace naman, ang nangyayari naman dito ay nagkakaroon naman ng um, <coughs> reorganization ng neural circuits. So, this, the, the, the neurons itself are being reorganized in order to consolidate the data. So, this is why it's happening at a slower rate as compared to the other one. Dahil nga, um, <clears throat> may reorganization na nangyayari. So, yan. So, with this particular study by Muller and Pil Pilsecker, okay, <clears throat> excuse so, ang nakita nila is that um, uh, before that, what they did is uh, they have people learn nonsense syllables um, and uh, immediately learn another another list, and then they only have a six minutes delay in between the list, um, and then they ask them to recall the first list. What they saw is that for people na um, may delay na 6 minutes, uh, yung, yung recall na nakuha nila ay mas mataas. Ito, 48%. Ayan, may delay na 6 minutes uh, in between the first list and the second list. On the other hand, uh, the people who did not have any delay, na parang right after the first list, second list, kagad sila, and then they were tested, 
28% lang yung na-recall nila. So, this shows us that um, the the potential or every experience that we have ha has, a, has the potential to be stored in the new memory. Pero nga, since they are fragile or they are still in the um, threshold of the working memory or short-term memory, um, encoding them to the long-term memory can be disrupted. Just like what happened here. May disruption. Kasi nga, hindi nagkaroon ng proper consolidation doon sa neural networks. So, hindi siya na sustain or hindi siya na retain. Kaya, mas mababa yung performance nitong immediate group as compared doon sa delayed group. <clears throat> okay. So, when we consolidate, um, when we consolidate uh, the memories, we are able to put them more on a permanent state and um, this also helps us to make them more resistant to disruption. So, this is also why when you are uh, reviewing, it helps that you have a delay in between chapters or in between. Uh, kaya nga sabi ko sa inyo, hindi maganda yung cramming. Kasi if you cram, basically what you're doing is like this. No delay. So chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, hanggang matapos may buong libro. But then, in terms of recall, yun nga, dahil nga counterproductive siya, at hindi siya nakoconsolidate, walang, um, walang nangyayaring uh, pahinga in between. You're not really giving time for your synapses to process the consolidation or consolidate the, the new memories. Ayan. Hindi ka napupunta dito sa part na to. So, kaya ang mas maganda na gradually, you are trying to understand, comprehending uh, your study materials and um, rehearsing it as well para mas maging fully consolidated na yung mga pinag-aralan mo um, kesa sa kinakram mo, everything all at once. Okay. So, um, in as early as 1948, uh, we have have here who was able to uh, have a neural record of the experience and from this he was able to say that learning and memory represented in the brain again he was able to provide as an evidence that there are physiological changes at the neural level or neuro not neurotic no <laughs> at the neuron level um, in terms of how we learn and how we uh, memorize things and then we also have the concept of long term po potentiation wherein there are enhanced firing or neural firing after repeated stimulation so with that stimulation nagkakaroon ng structural uh, changes and enhanced responding sa neural networks natin so this is also uh, helping in uh, the consolidation of the material. So, yun nga yung kaninang sinasabi ko, it's better that you read and reread the chapters that you have for your study instead of cramming all of it all together in just um, in just one one night. Diba? Usually, ganun tayo mag-study. So, hindi siya nakakatulong. So, dapat inaalala mo siya. And that's also how I I ask my, pag nagte-training kami for Frisbee, that's how I train my my um, the the uh, representatives. I ask them to do that in that manner. Like for example, may babato ako sa kanilang um, <coughs> concept. Lahat ng possible na 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 study na na or 
yeah, subject, subject matter na na-encounter nila yung concept na yun, sasabihin nila. So, like, for example, I would throw to them uh, Freud, Sigmund Freud. So, sabi nga, sa choice of personality, Sigmund Freud is the father of the psychoanalytic approach, blah, 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 ganyan, 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 ganyan. Um, and then, in abnormal psychology, sabi niya, ano, ni, um, uh, ni Freud na um, yung mga yung anal retentive has uh, a connection with being OCD or blah 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 so kumbaga kinoconnect connect nila doon as a way for rehearsal um, and it's also a way for them to be stimulated uh, in terms of those concepts para pag ayun, laban na or quiz bina um, mas mabilis nilang ma-recall yung mga concepts na yun <clears throat> okay um, so this shows us how it happens at the synaptic level so the first one and when the, the stimulus is presented to the synapse or pre-process na siya sa ating mga neurons <coughs> <coughs> Okay, and then um, the B part, we have the stimulus is repeated here. So, as it becomes more and more repeated, so nakikita nyo from this type of neuron, there are changes with the structure. From this and this, naging ganto na yung structure niya. Okay. And then with the C part or the C picture, we can see that after many repetitions, ito na yung structural changes ng neuron. And then nagkakaroon na ng more complex interconnection between the neurons, neuron to neuron. And then um, the, the changes in the structure also helps with the high neural firing rate. <clears throat> kahit na yung um, uh, yung stimulus is just the same so katulad nga nito kumari dito ko palang sa inyo present si Freud and then uh, nasa fourth year na kayo or nasa second year ng third year eh, ilang beses nyo na na-encounter si Freud ang daming beses na sa uh, let's say sa uh, intro to psych uh, na-encounter nyo rin si Freud sa T.O.P encounter nyo pa si Freud sa dev site, na-encounter nyo pa si Freud sa assessment, na-encounter nyo pa si Freud sa abpsych, so, ayun. So, kumbaga, ito, let's say, ito yung neuron about kay Freud. So, magiging complex na yung, um, <coughs> yung kanyang uh, structure, kasi nga, it keeps on being repeated again and again, and then, marami ka na rin parang, na consolidate na information or na encode na information about Freud. Okay. Now, uh, looking at it at the systems level of consolidation, ayan. So, after encoding, um, activity of the hippo hippocampus fades at, with time. So, that is the standard model of consolidation. Looking at it in the uh, in the um in the part or kumbaga looking at it looking at consolidation at the part of the brain so with this sequence nakikita natin sa A there is a connection between the cortex and the hippocampus so the blue parts are the ones that um give us the idea where are the connections between the cortex and the hippocampus. We all know that the cortex is here. Okay. <clears throat> and then we see that um, dahil nga uh, hindi dotted line yung um, arrows. Yeah. The connection are initially strong and connections between the cortical areas these are the cortical areas are quite weak so we have the dotted um, arrows or dash arrows uh, which are represented by green here 
Okay. And then later, the activity between the hippocampus and cortex is called the reactivation. So, dito. And then, after some time, makikita mo na nagbaliktad na sila. So, ang dated um, arrow na ay yung blue at ang solid arrows ay yung green. So, yan. Yeah. So, uh, it gives us the, the it represents that there is a weak connection na between the hippocampus and the cortex and a stronger connection between the cortical areas. And then, after some time, ayan, wala na kinalaman si, si hippocampus with the memory and it's only the, um, or kumbaga, the, the interconnection or yung, uh, yeah, the interconnection are only within the cortical areas. dito na lang siya. Wala nang galing sa hippocampus dito sa part na yan. So, that's how the um, <coughs> the memories are consolidated. So, from the hippocampus to the cortical areas and then pag okay na siya, pag strong na yung connection, uh, we go through the we now have the connections in the cortical areas. <clears throat> okay, now what about memory loss and injury? So, um, a good part, when we talk about memory, we also have to talk about memory loss. Kasi nga, again, we wouldn't really understand how we uh, retain memory if not for, uh, diba nga, if not for the injury na nasusustain natin sa brain natin. And for the past uh, chapters, this is, uh, we have seen how important these conditions are to understand uh, these things better. So, <clears throat> so, using the standard model of consolidation, um, it is partly based on the observation of the injury or trauma-related memory loss. So, particularly, <clears throat> particularly retrograde amnesia. So, wherein there is loss of memory, for events prior to the trauma. So, <clears throat> ito yung usual na nakikita natin sa mga movies, sa mga drama na, uh, kung wari, um, na aksidente, na bagwak yung ulo, and then pag tinanong siya, uh, anong pangalan mo, hindi niya na maalala kung anong pangalan niya. So, that's basically retrograde amnesia. Whereas, with the graded amnesia, <clears throat> Uh, memory for recent events is more fragile than for more remote events. So, uh, so sabi, this is a more um, this is more uh, severe for events that happened just before injury and uh, it becomes less severe for uh, earlier events. So, we also have these types of drama na uh, alam niya kung sino siya. <clears throat> alam niya kung sino siya. Um, pero, yung pinaka-recent na nangyari, hindi niya na alam. Alam ko may mga ganun drama. Yung kasal na pala siya, pero dahil nga nagkaroon siya ng ano, <laughs> ang, mga, ang mga drama na papanood ko nun dati um, nagkaroon siya ng uh, amnesia nga hindi niya naalala na kasal pala siya doon ano yung mga ganun so that is graded amnesia pero uh, kilala niya kung sino siya pero not not the things that have transpired uh, before the injury or recent things that have transpired before the injury. <clears throat> so, this is how we can look at the uh, amnesia 
in 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 visual presentation so this is a retrograde amnesia ayan lahat ng past niya hindi niya na alam hindi niya na maalala kung sino siya saan siya pinanganak sino nanay niya sino tatay niya kilang birthday niya di ba hindi niya na maalala whereas with degraded amnesia ayan hindi niya na uh, naalala niya pare kung sino nanay niya tatay niya pero um, hindi niya maalala na kasal na pala siya at may anak na siya dalawa yung anak niya so may mga ganun so this is again prior to the injury happening Whereas with anterograde amnesia, ito naman yung amnesia for events that occur after an injury um, <coughs> is sustained. So, a good example of this one is 51st dates. Anterograde amnesia. So, nagkaroon siya ng injury. So, everything na mangyayari Ayan, hindi niya naalam. Kuwari, na nakilala niya ako nung time na uh, So, nagkaroon na siya ng injury, nakilala niya ako. Tapos, kinabukasan, hindi niya naman ako ilala. Papakilala naman ako. So, basically, that's the plot of Fifty First Dates. Uh, maganda yung movie na yan, actually. So, try to watch it for those who haven't really watched it yet. So, that's basically how we uh, can see uh, amnesia being presented in a picture. Okay. Okay, so the multiple trace model of consolidation. So, uh, as we know, um, when we retrieve uh, materials, the hippocampus is largely involved in this process. So, hippocampus is uh, activated usually for both recent and remote memories. So, this is what have been found out by um, Gilboa and uh, his colleagues um, sometime in 2004. <coughs> And then this uh, particular, uh, no, the particular um, findings of uh, Gilboa was um, substantiated by the study of Biscontas naman and colleagues. So, ang um, nakita niya with Biscontas is that, ayan niya, the response of the hippocampus can change over time. So, as we have seen doon sa... Um, sa systems consolidation uh, picture, dun sa brain picture kanina. So, ito nga yung kaninang sequence na nakita natin. Ayan. So, pero in this particular model naman, nag-iba na siya instead of mag fade out yung blue line it it also becomes or it's also sustained while the intercortical um, connections are uh, getting stronger so yun yung pinikaita niya okay now this is a good example or this is another good uh, thing to note for this particular uh, lecture um, how is a sleep a big factor for our memory or consolidation of our memory? So, uh, nakita ni sa study ni uh, guys and colleagues is that memory consolidation appears to be enhanced during sleep. So, this is why you really need to sleep to have a restful sleep before big tests. So, okay na mag-study ka for all week or mag-study ka for the whole day for as long as you take your uh, 7 to 8 hours of sleep. Kasi, uh, from their study is uh, nakita nila na mataas yung uh, memory consolidation process when we are sleeping. And one reason behind it is that when we sleep, there uh, basically the sleep 
keeps us from the uh, interference from the environmental stimuli. And remember, malaki ang factor ng interference sa environment natin when it comes to our memory or coding of memory. Remember dun sa working memory and sa short-term memory, di ba? Uh, pag um, pag ina-apply si interference, uh, bumababa yung rates ng recall natin sa mga data na dapat i-recall natin. <clears throat> and then, uh, again, the, the study was substan substantiated by Wilhelm and colleagues wherein they found out that there are some memories that are more consolidated than other types of memories. So, um, how did they find it out? They found it out uh, wherein they have a memory task. Um, memory for task was stronger when participants expected to be tested after awaking. So, uh, I think this one is correct uh, when we when we review the night before a test, ayan, mas, ano, mas na, kaya nga, ano, eh, maganda na alam mo yung schedule ng test mo. Sa board exam, ganun siya. So, alam mo kung ano yung itetest mo the first day, second day, um, para makapag-prepare ka na fully. So, those things are not just uh, scheduled on a whim. May, uh, may mga reasons sila behind it. So, same way that your uh, tests are scheduled um, in the same way then that I, I don't really give um, surprise tests. Laging announced or laging expected ang mga quizzes ko. Kasi nga, um, mas mataas yung chances of consolidation or mas mataas ang chances for recall if the the participants or the test takers are expecting the test especially after uh, waking yeah kaya mas maganda nga na you have a good night good night stress before you take the exam after reviewing, of course, for the exam. Okay, now for the memory updating naman. <clears throat> for the memory updating, yan. so, we have what we call reconsolidation, wherein, just like our OS sa phones natin, nag update din yung memory natin. Pero, syempre, tanong mo nga dito, how can they update when it's memories? So, hindi ba dapat consolidated na siya, as is na siya? So, <clears throat> kasi when we, once we get them out to the, um, to our consciousness, na nagiging fragile ulit yung data, or yung na-encode natin. And then, when we get them back to the, ano, to the, the long-term memory to be consolidated again. Ayan. Para nga, mas maging stronger na sila ulit. Nagkakaroon tayo ng re reconsolidation. What they have said, or what they have seen in their uh, study, uh, Nader and uh, colleagues, as well as Hap Hapbak and his colleagues, is that, ayan, the memory that we have is constantly constructed and remodeled in response to learning and condition. So, basically, what, what they're saying is that our memory tries to adapt as well. <coughs> okay. And we see this as... Um, we see this happening with uh, people who have post-traumatic stress disorder. Kasi nga, um, they have uh, they, they have this disorder because of traumatic memories, and uh, of course, to be able to to be able to uh, address their condition, they have really to to face these traumatic memories. So, um, 
so basically ang ginagawa nila pag nagte-therapy sila is uh, it's being recon- re- reconsolidated um ina-update siya in a way na uh, pina-process namin mga therapies uh, what's happening or what happened how did it, it impact them so nire-reframe namin yung uh, nangyari sa kanila in another perspective we're, basically we're not really changing what happened to them but rather we're trying to reframe how they are reacting to what happened to them so yeah so just like what uh, Brunette and his colleagues did were in uh, participants reactivated a traumatic memory and uh, they also have drug administered to block the amygdala um, stress receptors during the reconsolidation of memory and then with that being done when they try to reactivate that same memory yan, mas bumaba na yung stress response nung um, <coughs> may mga PTSD as compared doon sa earlier na ginawa nila. So, basically, sa therapy, psychotherapy, ganun ang ginagawa namin. Nare-restructure namin yung uh, response ng brain, although we're not really seeing it per se. But, we're trying to restructure how they are responding to that particular memory or that particular stimuli. Uh, para nga, pas, hindi, na, hindi na traumatic or hindi na trauma uh, trauma based yung response nila okay okay and last this is the last slide okay so how does this help us particularly you guys especially you you have a lot of um <clears throat> you have a lot of studying to do um so when we talk about memory remember that um, cramming is not really the way to do it and when you when you study materials you cannot just read it or memorize the concepts first off you have to elaborate things associate what you are learning to what you already know so just like how i train uh, the participants for quiz b yun ayun nga, ibabato ko yung name ni Freud ano na alam nila tungkol kay Freud, ano pa yung alam nila and then I ask, I ask their group mates or yeah, their team mates to add to what is already known about Freud so we try to elaborate it further and then <clears throat> generate questions and do a self test so you can do that to yourself when you're uh, studying like for example um, and what is uh, cognitive psychology so cognitive psychology is a branch of psychology that studies the the structure of um, not the structure of the brain per se but um, study the the components of how we learn things how we remember things, how we make decisions, etc., etc. And then, of course, do self-test. So, with self-test, ang daming mga, um, uh, before, I remember when I was uh, studying before, my mom would do, ano, especially when I was in elementary, my mom would give us uh, test papers na siya yung gumawa. And then, ayun, dun niya, dun niya kami basically uh, nire-review. O, oh, diba, natandaan ko yun. Um, and then, when I was already at at the age na I can study on my own, that's also what I do. Um, <clears throat> so, minsan, nag, we also do that sa, ano, sa pag nagtitrain kami for quiz B, uh, we make flashcards. And, yun nga, I always ask them to write the flashcards themselves because uh, it had been proven uh, by several studies that when you have um, procedural memory or if you remember how you write the word, mas mataas yung chance na masusustain mo siya sa long-term memory mo. And then you take breaks. Take breaks. 
um, if your brain cannot take it anymore, take a break, 15-20 minutes break. Um, kasi nga, again, it had been uh, it had been presented to us that a spacing effect a memory is better for multiple short study sessions than cramming. Again, cramming is not the key to success. Hindi po yan pwedeng gawin. Especially if you plan to take the board exam. And then, ayan, consolidation is enhanced by, sl uh, by sleep after study. So, it's good to, to sleep after a whole day of study. Hindi, huwag tayong maniwala doon sa, um, ano ba to? Sa pakapag natulog na tayo, makakalimutan na natin. Uh, it will not happen for as long as you didn't just, uh, do the maintenance memory but you did the, the elaborative uh, rehearsal pala um, if you did the elaborative rehearsal then hindi mo siya malilimutan uh, walang problema matulog uh, wag natin gawin yung pagtulog uh, pag pagtulog tayo ilalagay yung ano, libro sa ilalo ng unan para makabisado yung, yung materials and then <coughs> This one, this one is very important. Avoid the illusion of learning. Uh, just because you memorize or just because you know the concept, it doesn't mean that you understand the concept. So this is also why a lot of your items in the quizzes are more on application of the concept rather than just a simple recall of the definition of the concept. Kasi pag hindi ko yung ginawa, basically, hindi masusustain yung mga pinag-aralan nyo uh, sa inyo up until the time that you're ready to take the board exam. Okay, so hopefully you learned a lot from this discussion and hopefully the things that you have learned, um, you will be uh, able to apply it to your own study habits or study technique. By the way, if you are interested, you can access this uh, TED Talks. Tingnan nyo na lang para itype nyo. I'm sorry, I cannot make the this one a uh, clickable link kasi nga video to. So, <laughs> ayan, para ma-access nyo siya. Um, so, you can also have an idea of how to improve your memory. Um, maybe you can um, see or watch this uh, TED Talk. Alright, so thank you so much guys. I'll see you all during our synchronous um, lesson.